All right guys, we are 12 days out from the marathon. And after this workout, the taper officially starts. So the taper, we are reducing training volume, we are reducing training intensity, and the goal is that we're coming into the Buffalo New York Marathon on May 29th as fresh and fit as possible. So today's workout, the last speed workout of this prep, everything after this is just easy, lower heart rate, aerobic based runs. Um, this coming Saturday is my last run over double digits. So this Saturday is a 10 mile long easy run, but today's workout is a two mile warm up, and then six miles at a 610 pace, and then a two mile cool down. I remember a lot of these workouts very vividly from last year's marathon prep with Jeff, I worked with Jeff for my sub three, and then as you guys know, for this prep, we're going for a sub 250. Uh, but I remember last year's doing this workout on the track. And for a lot of the splits last year, we were trying to hold a 640 to a 645 minute per mile pace. That was my race pace. This year, obviously different goal. Race pace is between like a 620, 625. But that's today's workout. After this, the taper officially is in the works and we're going to use this video to talk about how to taper why to taper what is a taper so you can go into your race as fresh and fit as possible So the hay is in the barn. That wrapped up the last mile of a tempo anaerobic threshold pace. Mile six of that set was a 550 mile. I'd say average, I mean, we'll get splits and we'll go over splits after I finish this cool down. I'd say it was probably for that six mile segment, they have 558 average mile now with that being said i heard this the other day and i loved it the hay it's in the barn right however now it's my job now it's your job during a prep don't light that hay on fire rest recover taper well which we're going to talk about in this video like i said but the taper is more difficult mentally than physically. All 
All right, so going over the splits, like I said, last speed workout of this prep. Now it's just easy stuff, easy, shorter stuff. All right, so 10K uh, was 37.20. So mile three was a 5.59 minute per mile pace. Mile four was a 5.58 minute per mile pace. Mile five was a 5.58 minute per mile pace. Mile six was a 6.01 minute per mile pace. Mile seven, 6.01 minute per mile pace. And mile eight, the last mile at 10K, was a 5.51. So, that wraps it up. It was a solid workout. This has been a solid prep. Now, let's see what we can do. This marathon prep is our way of helping you reach your goals by showing you what we are doing to accomplish ours. Throughout this series, leading up to the Buffalo New York Marathon, we will provide you the tools, resources, and knowledge to PR your next race. Training as a hybrid athlete has taught me so much about endurance, from marathons, an Ironman triathlon, and 100 mile ultra trail races. I'm now setting the goal to run a sub 250 marathon. It's time to lean in and go one more. So let's talk about the importance of a taper. Now, what is a taper? A taper is when you're reducing training volume and intensity to go into a race or a competition, fresh, fit, healthy, and ready to put all of your effort out there, right? It's like what we typically do, and you'll see in a marathon build or a prep, is volume and intensity builds, it builds, it builds. You reach a peak of training, Within that peak or within that build, you're gonna have some micro cycles and some deloads. But before the race, you are going to decrease volume and intensity so you can show up race day feeling your absolute best. Now, this looks a little different for everyone, but for me, a taper is 10 to 14 days out from, in this case, a marathon. So I'm gonna go over two weeks out what my training looks like. This is my taper. Our taper for this prep ends up being about 12 days prior to the race. Now, after everyone does a prep or a build, most people have done correctly are fit, but how healthy are you going to show up on race day? And your taper is going to play a lot or a big part of that. So let's talk two weeks out and then one week out. Two weeks out from the marathon, Monday, I have a seven mile easy run. Tuesday, which was my last big workout that we, we did you know, in the beginning of this video, two mile warm up, six miles, which we ended up doing around a six minute per mile pace, uh, but we did like a 5.58 minute per mile pace, and then two mile cool down. Wednesday, seven miles easy. Thursday, six miles easy. Friday, five miles easy. Saturday, 10 miles easy. Now, whenever I say easy miles, that is, it's specific to the individual. And when I say easy, I'm talking about effort or heart rate. So all of these runs, when I say easy, are done below my max aerobic heart rate. Heart rate is gonna be between, say 137 and 145 beats per minute. Now, one week out, which is going to start next week, Monday will be five easy miles. Tuesday, four easy miles. Wednesday, we have a two mile warm up, eight times 800 meter repeats, each one of those done in three minutes and five seconds with a two mile cool down. And then Thursday is off. Friday, four miles easy. And then Saturday is a shakeout run. It's the day before the run, which will be about two miles. And the next day is Sunday, which is the day of the Buffalo New York Marathon. So this is what a taper for me is going to look like those last two weeks, but really it's starting after this workout right here that we just did. So the goal now is nutrition is gonna stay the same 
in the next YouTube video, which will be the last marathon prep series video before actual race day, we're going to talk about uh, fueling up and carbo loading those three to four days prior to a race or a competition. So nutrition is spot on, hydration is spot on. I'm not changing much in regards to that until we start carving up. But I want to go into this race as fresh, as fit, as healthy as possible. And that's why we are decreasing training volume and intensity to allow my body to just recover and feel great going to race day. Now, one thing I do wanna talk about that is probably the hardest part of the taper is you're going to feel mentally like you're you are losing fitness. And it, it happens every taper, it happens to a lot of athletes, a lot of people, where you are say five, six days into your taper, your, your volume's decreasing, your intensity is decreasing, and then all of a sudden in your head you're thinking, I'm losing my fitness. I'm, I'm losing my shape. All this work I did the last three to four months prior, I am losing. But trust me, the taper is essential, and you are going to feel this mentally. Physically, you start feeling better. You should start feeling more fresh and some vitality back into your, your body and specifically your legs. But mentally, setting expectations, you are going to feel like you're losing fitness. That's just part of it. But trust me, you are recovering so that you can go into that race as fresh and fast as possible. So, don't cheat the taper. It is essential. And this is kind of what my taper is looking like going into the race. All right, so we just spent the morning with Cameron Haynes. Cam has been in Austin for his book tour. Uh, he just released his book, Endure. I've read it, I highly recommend it. It was an amazing book. And he's been doing interviews and podcasts in the Austin, Texas area. And he was on the Bear Performance Podcast this morning, which has been one of, if not my favorite, conversation, discussion, podcast we've done yet. So that podcast will actually be released the day after this YouTube video goes live. Last night we met downtown Austin, we went for a run together, we got Kava, and then uh, this morning we, we wrapped the podcast. So we'll show you some clips from that. So you gotta be out there. You know I mean? Just like in hunting, you're never gonna kill anything from your couch wondering, you know, I wonder if the hunting good, I wonder if the weather's good, I wonder what the animals are doing. Get out there and anything can happen, but you have to be out there, take that first step and just be in the woods or, and even with running and, and I know you get this a lot too, but people don't know where to start. Start by getting out that freaking of the house, closing that door and just getting outside and just starting, just do something. And then you build on that, but it doesn't have to be anything crazy. It doesn't have to be, you know, a marathon or it doesn't have to be an ultra marathon. It has to be walking around the block. That's where it starts. That's where everybody starts. You walk around the block or maybe you run a mile or maybe you walk a mile and just that consistent effort will lead you to go one more and then who knows where you end up. Now what we're doing is we're downtown Austin and we are exploring some real estate for what is going to be BPN's first flagship store. So we've been talking about this internally with the VPN team. This is the first time we are sharing this information. And what we wanna do is build a flagship store downtown Austin that we can use for community activations, meetups for downtown runs along Lady Bird Lake, um, some events, sell our products, and just use to have some, some real estate and presence in the Austin, Texas city that we're super excited for. So today we are looking at a couple properties, the first properties we are looking at in hopes that you know the back half of 2022 and then maybe in the beginning of 2023, we make this store live. Now some of these properties we're looking at will need some tender loving care, some TLC, 
some, uh, some fresh paint and maybe a little remodeling. But if it has the bones and the structure, we're good to go. So let's go look at some spots. So the first spot we looked at was cool. It was this old industrial building. It was massive, big garage doors. It gave us more space, uh, more parking. The capabilities that we could do something with it are, are massive, like we do a lot. The downfall is it needs a lot of TLC. We actually weren't able to film in there because whoever is currently leasing it right now has an arsenal of very expensive cars. I don't know who's in there, but they have a nice car collection. They made us put the camera down. It was super cool. It just, it would take a lot to get it up to where we need, would need it to be. And what's cool is it was across the street from Rafa and their store, their flagship store in Austin is sweet. This one, which is right down the road, is a house that is, you know, there's, there's all these houses on the west side of 6th Street that are converted into businesses. And this is kind of the feel that I was looking for. So two completely different vibes and, and feels and looks. But with our flagship store, we're not trying to make it like this super profitable part of the business, the arm of the business. It is more so to bring in our community, have a, a spot in Austin where we can activate that community, bring them in for events, and, and like I said, have a presence. So we'll see. So we looked at three properties. One was super industrial, one was a home, and the one we just saw was kind of a hybrid in between. So when we talk like BPN flagship store in Austin, uh, we're not looking for this very clean office type cookie cutter building. We want some character. We want it to feel like Austin. And what's cool about Austin is a lot of these flagship stores or retail experiences here are old houses that were converted into retail experiences. So things we need um, or things we want is area in the backyard where we can host events and meetups. Like I said, we want like uh, old structured wood floors and some textured worn character uh, walls and, and features like we want this place to have character I'm, I'm thinking like old distressed leather couches and chairs and a lot of plants inside and uh, longhorns hung on the walls and there's cow hides on the floor and it smells like the inside of a cowboy boot that's what I'm thinking for this spot so there's places that have potential for sure they need a little TLC but if you can see the potential in it, you bring in a general contractor, you tear down some walls that aren't load bearing and you know, you just add some lipstick to it. I see potential in some of them. So we're going to explore a little bit, but there's options out there. You just have to have the vision. You know, when you walk, walk up to the building, you might not see it right away, but is the potential there? Is there a vision there? We'll find out. So we finally finished our home office build out, which I will walk you through here in a second. But I had to showcase this candle. Now, what's so special about this candle? We were walking around downtown Austin a few weeks ago, came across this store called Man Ready. And the scent is Texas Campfire. It is one of the most accurate smelling candles I've ever smelled in my entire life. I love this thing. Mm. Unleash the great outdoors with an intense blend of Texas mesquite, oak, and pecan wood. Spot on. As you can see, the dogs have thoroughly been enjoying this space. They're always in here when I'm working. 
but to kind of walk you through the home office completion. So we did shiplap around the office, uh, same size as the kitchen and the same stain. And we had this custom built in done and painted it a, a gray. We still need to fill the shelves. So we're going to source some pieces from antique shops and boutiques in the central Texas area. Um, we had these reclaimed wood beams installed. So they have a desk here, TV, so we can kind of screen cast from the, the computer to the, the TV there. Uh, the side wall or accent wall is brick. And then we have a skull from Skull Bliss. And then like the bench here and the guitars mounted on the wall. So I will be spending a lot of evenings in here, some mornings, but I'm, uh, I'm happy to have wrapped up this home project. Now some things to discuss in terms of a taper and things to be aware of during a taper. Questions that I have been receiving from a lot of people who are in a prep or about to enter a prep. First thing is nutrition. A lot of people will assume that as you decrease training volume and intensity, you need to reduce your caloric intake. And that is very far from the truth. Now we have one main goal in a taper and that is to eliminate or reduce fatigue that's been built up during a prep and go into this race, like we've talked about, as fresh, fit, and healthy as possible. So it makes no sense to decrease caloric intake because you are trying to actively recover your body, right? Now this doesn't mean you go nuts and eat whatever you want. You're just not trying to actively decrease caloric intake. We're trying to like I said, be as fit, fresh, and healthy as possible. So eat as normal, and then we'll start carving up three days out from the race. The second thing I wanna talk about is, you know, in the mornings, I was doing 10 to 11 miles, easy miles, for my average day. And with the taper, you know, right now we're at five to seven miles. You know, in the last week, it'll be like, four miles in the morning, which gives me more time. And this doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to sleep in or, or watch TV or kind of just sit around during those extra 20 to 30 minutes that I would have been running. I will use this time and some extra time to do some active recovery. I will use the compression boots in the evening. Um, I will do some myofascial release some stretching, some yoga poses. Uh, I will use the Theragun on my, my lower body, my legs, and just kind of break up as much of that tight tissue or fascia that is just kind of wound up during a big prep and a big build. So allocating the time that I was previously using for running to now recovering to promote that fit, fresh, and healthy influence during the taper. That's the goal. So don't change nutrition. The only change we're going to make is when we get to the carb up, which will be the next YouTube video, the last YouTube video of this series before race day. And the second thing to keep in mind, allocate the time or reallocate the time you were using to those extra miles during your, your prep and your build to some active recovery. So Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We are officially in the taper and now it is time to see what results we can generate from the work that has been put in because like we've said, the hay is in the barn. All right guys, thanks for tuning in to another video of our marathon prep series. If you enjoyed this one, please like the video, comment below, and if you are new, make sure to subscribe. And while you're here, make sure to click our last episode of our marathon prep video series, which is right here. This was a 22 mile workout with a lot of those paces at marathon splits. So we'll see you guys in the next video.